Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time now. And one of the things that I hear all the time is, you make it look so easy. Well, that's because I think it is. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques, and I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own jewelry. So if you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. Okay, so to make our bracelet today, we have some of these beautiful hibiscus flowers, the Czech glass. So these are a gorgeous blue with a gold wash, and then these are a gray with a copper wash. And I love the uh, combination of the colors together, and then mixing the rest of it with copper, I think turned out so, so nice. I have two different sizes of jump rings. I have a large coiled ring. I have a button. I also have one of these uh, center links. I have a lobster clasp. I have a couple of uh, these bead tips that are sort of a special kind because they um, open on the side. And then I have two crimp covers. And I also have about 30 inches of a three ply Irish wax linen. And we're also going to be using a bit of glue today. And you can pretty much use any, but I've got Loctite right here. And then for tools, we're going to be using our bent chain nose pliers, our pliers and a pair of cutters or any kind of scissors that you might have hanging around. So let's get started. So and I also forgot to mention that we're going to need a pair of uh, tweezers. You can do this knotting technique without tweezers, but I do find it um, makes it for a nicer knot. So any kind of tweezers you have, we may have a few of these left in stock, but they've been out of stock for a little while due to a manufacturing shortage, but I'm trying to get some new ones in. All right, so I have taken my uh, Irish wax linen and cut it in half. So I have about two pieces of about 15 inches long. So I'm gonna take one end and I'm gonna run it through the um, link that I've got here and I'm gonna create a knot. So I have to pull it enough so that I can catch both of these pieces in a knot. So I'm just gonna sort of wrap it around my fingers. Now this is where it does come in handy because you can sort of, you know, pull it through and then, you know, I just like these tweezers for everything. I find that they really work great. So this first one, we want to get pushed down there as close as we can. Now you will find that the Irish wax linen can grab a little bit. So you may have to like pull one end and then pull the other. What we're trying to do is just secure that on there. So I do find, there we go. It just needs to be pulled down and that's what we want there. All right, and I just want to make sure that this is tied really well together. So I'm going to tie just one small, just like, you know, a little knot like you're going to be tying your shoelaces. And we do want a little bit more bulk here. So this doesn't really do anything to secure the knot to the link. It's just adding a little bit of bulk and making sure that this knot won't come apart. All right, so now we can trim this off. The other thing that you can do if, um, if you're, you know, kind of a really artistic person and you want to do something fun, you can leave this on here, trim it off, fray the ends and or add beads or do all kinds of, you know, different things. So um, if you want, you can leave this on instead of doing what I'm doing right now, which is going to be cutting that um, and play with it a little bit uh, later on. So, but you just want to make sure you're cutting the small one. And then now what we're going to do is take one of our little crimp covers and place this knot inside. Now, this is really hard for me to show you how to do this because I have to hold on to it in a completely different way than I would if I was doing this. So there we go. What you want to do is kind of slip that in there like that. Now I'm going to take my uh, pliers and I'm going to squeeze that together. Now, I know that a lot of people like to use their um, crimping pliers for this, but I find that this works just as well. Uh, but if you find that you have a little bit better uh, go at this with crimping pliers, then uh, go ahead and use those, whatever works. So you'll see now there's kind of a little gap there. And what I do is I kind of start going on either side and just sort of pushing gently back and forth. You can see that move just a little bit there. And I'm just taking like little baby bites, um, trying to get this to, you know, ma maneuver into the shape that I want. I don't want to push down on it too much because I don't want it to... Um, flatten out. So I'm just switching pliers because my pliers don't have um, a spring in them. And sometimes when I'm trying to maneuver things, it doesn't always go the way that I want it. So just take little bites and go back and forth and 
eventually, if you do this enough, it will close up. So that's what we're aiming for, something that looks similar to that. So I'd probably spend a few more minutes and just get it a little better aligned, but that looks pretty good. All right, so now I am going to uh, make a knot. So I'm just gonna go around my fingers and pull that through. Now the way that I do my knots is I take my tweezers, I go through the knot and I place the end of the tweezers right where I want my knot to go and then I pull up on it. So now you can do these with your fingers, but I find with the Iris Wax Linen, it gets stuck sometimes and uh, it makes it a little bit harder to uh, get your knots exactly where you want. So I find that using the tweezers just kind of makes it a little easier. Now we want to kind of roll this in our fingers to create a little bit of a, it's gonna be like a needle, and that will slip through quite nicely. So I'm starting off with one of the green, and then we're making a knot around my fingers. And I'm gonna place my tweezers there, and then just pull up. And then what I do is just kind of pull that out and push down that knot. So the knots are kind of nice in jewelry. It makes it lay uh, really nicely, and um, it gives you that little, little sort of a bump in between your beads, which I, I really like and have always liked that look. But um, knotting, I, I, I love knotting. It's one of those sort of cathartic things that I don't find it hard to do once I figured out a really uh, easy method, which is using these tweezers. Um, then I've just, I've always enjoyed knotting. So that's all we're gonna do is just complete this all the way down. So I'm gonna do a couple more here just to make sure that you know exactly what I'm doing. And then for once, I am actually gonna edit the rest of that part out because it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna take me a little bit of time to get that made. So that's all you're gonna do is you're gonna keep doing this and you're gonna alternate back and forth. So let me just pop the rest of these on and I will show you what the next step is. All right, and now I'm just gonna be putting on my last one here. So you may have to um, sort of twirl this between your fingers once in a while so that, um, because it tends to flatten out. So you'll end up making it like a little bit of a, a needle by sort of twirling it in your fingers. And you'll know if you're going the wrong way because it will literally open up. So just reverse that up. So I'm gonna finish this last one up. And I will explain a little bit about sizing in a minute once I get this done. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I get asked this all the time when I wear jewelry in my uh, videos, because I don't wear jewelry very often, to be honest, um, because, you know, I live on a, a, you know, on the country in a farm, so <laughs> where am I gonna wear jewelry? So this is the Willow bracelet. I know I will get asked what bracelet this is. We still have kits available. It is a super fun and super easy kit to throw together. And that was part of the Great Bead Extravaganza, but this is the Willow bracelet in the uh, uh, blue and green, I guess is what I called it. Okay, so this is what we've got happening so far here. So, okay, so we've just got all of our knotting done. So now what we need to do is add some more knots on the end here because I wanna bulk this up a little bit. So I am going to create a couple more knots over top of that first knot. So the way that I do that is I literally just take the end of my um, tweezers and I go right over top of that knot. And then I'm just gonna pull down and I'm gonna do that a couple times. I wanna have something a little beefier to put the bead tip on. So I'm gonna go over top of that again. And I think, you know, three, usually three or four, there's three, and that's looking pretty good, but you know, we can always go four. So I find the best thing to do is to take your tweezers and go right over top of where you want that to go. And I want all of those knots to, <clears throat> pardon me, I hate clearing my throat on camera, but it's just kind of what's happened here. <laughs> so, um, so that's what I want, it's kind of a beefy knot like that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on the other end. So go around my first knot there. And both my husband and I got sick. I had it a couple days before my birthday and then I rallied a bit so that I could hang out with my girlfriends. And then I was flat out for a couple days. So um, it was not fun and we're still not feeling well. We were talking last night about uh, this has been kind of a weird one. I don't know what the heck, I guess just some strange flu, but whoo. I got some sick and now it's both, it's settled in both of our chests. So 
I'm a coffin and everything every two seconds. So I sound a little hoarse and raspy. Okay, so it doesn't have to look pretty because we're going to uh, cover that all up. So the reason that I have to use these um, side tips is that it's how else are you going to get that in there? So all I want to do is just encase that in there. So I'm going to open that back up. But what you can do now is you can trim that off, which I know is always a little frightening when you've created something. Just make sure that that is nice and um, skookum there. you got lots of knots. Again, you could put a little dab of glue if you were a little bit worried about it. And I find that these are so easy to do that you can just do them up with your fingers. All you want to make sure is that you've got those two holes aligned there because we're going to be putting um, a jump ring through there. So you can't get much easier than these on the end. Um, they shouldn't cut through this... Uh, Iris wax linen, like the edge of the metal on there, I don't think it'll cut through uh, because Irish wax, linen, uh, Irish wax linen is very, very strong. So there we go. So we just got it like that. On one end, we're going to take our small jump ring and we're going to open that up and we are going to attach our lobster clasp. So I will um, explain a little bit more about the, the differences with the um, ends and the sizing in a second here too because we try to be uh, size inclusive at Kelly's Bee Boutique because I'm a larger girl and uh, I hate that I can never buy jewelry anywhere like literally there's nowhere I can buy jewelry because I have large wrists thanks grandma <laughs> I have wrists and arms and legs just like my grandmother on my dad's side so um, this is going to make a rather large bracelet. I think it easily fits me and I have about a seven and a half to an eight inch wrist, depending on, um, you know, how you want things to fit. So you might have to like hold your tongue the right way to get this through because, um, if those holes aren't lined up exactly, it can be a little hard to get sort of this round through there, but I know it goes in cause I've made this before. So sometimes what I do is I turn that around and come at it from a different angle. There we go, see that goes through easily. So we're gonna take the larger jump ring and attach the uh, coiled ring with that. And I don't think I've opened that up quite enough. You know, some days it's just all how you hold your tongue, right? I can't seem to get that in there today. All right, let's try going at it a different angle. Again, it's always about angles. There we go. Just was coming at it the wrong way. And we're just going to do that up. So always make sure that you jiggle those back and forth so that they um, go together nice and tight. All right, and the very last thing that we're going to do, and then I will explain the sizing for you, is we're going to take this button and we're going to be really brave and we're going to cut the uh, shank of the button off. So I just use the flush side of my cutters and I'm going to go in and trim that. And then we're going to take our glue. Now, I probably would normally use E6000, but I didn't seem to have any out in the shop. So we're just going to use a little blob of this. You just want something that's a bit more viscous, something that's going to hold. And then we're going to pop that down inside. And then all that does is create a really cute little link like that. So it just adds that little extra something. And um, I've been making this link for years where I've cut that off. And, and usually I will um, use a contrasting color, but I found with the copper that the copper looked the best. So there's the finished bracelet. Now, as far as our, our length goes, we're going to give you a couple extra jump rings. So if you need to make the, this even larger, you can add your extra small jump rings on one end or your little bit larger rings on the other end to create a little bit of length. Now, I think for most people, you're going to probably um, want to stop about here and not add these. Uh, some people, you may have to just remove one. But you know what? When it sits under your wrist, nobody's ever going to be able to see that there's like six on one side and five on the other. So I never really worry about that. You could always adjust it by, um, you know, removing or adding uh, your jump rings too. So this, I, what I what I'm trying to sort of get at, I suppose, is that I wouldn't just start making this and then add all of those on there. So if you're making this for yourself, add up to about here and then start measuring it against your uh, wrist. The um, ends are going to add about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch on, of your length. So you want to take that into account, but don't just start adding everything and then go, uh oh, it's really long because you will not be able to get these um, knots out. So 
I really hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, this one, it was really easy to put together. It's a super easy uh, um, technique and it's a very wearable piece. I'm just trying to get that on there. You know, I don't like having nails because I can't do anything with them. I don't know how you girls deal with those long nails. <laughs> anyway, there we go. There's our piece today. I've yet to come up with a name, so hopefully I can figure that out by the time I'm finished video videoing this. So if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate the support for my channel. And uh, make sure to leave me a comment as I love to hear from everybody. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do so as it really does help it out. So thank you so much for watching today and we will see you on the next one.